We're here in the <laughs> National Rockin' Pod 2023 with comedian, writer, writer. actor. I've done some acting. Okay. I was, I was on Curb Your Enthusiasm for three seconds, so. <laughs> okay, let's talk, let's, let's talk about your three seconds of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I delivered a phone message to Larry David. Thank you, and good night. And that's it. That's all you did on there. That's all I did. I was like, Larry, your wife called. Don't forget to call her on the way home or something like that. And, uh, yeah, it was, and Jeff Garland's like recurring, you're going to have a recurring role. Cause I used to work with him every Friday night at the laugh factory where I, when I was hosting and he was like, you're going to be my, cause I played his assistant. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was never back. Yeah. You never came back. To no. What happened to the reoccurring part? I don't know. It never happened. Like, you're going to be back. And then, he, then the next season he goes, we didn't film any scenes did, in my office. Were you like, I did, I, did I do a bad job delivering that message? I, I, was I, it like a bad? I actually think I stunk. I, I, I think I was pretty bad. Yeah. So that's probably why. How'd you get into comedy? Um, uh, being an awkward kid and uh, kind of being a goofball. And um, like, you know, it. this whole world, like when you're 13 and 14, like uh -huh. some people think we're not cool, even though we are. Everyone. And uh, so I was just always goofy and I always was like in drama, but I always wanted to do comedy. Like I, I'd go to sleepovers and I'd rent comedy specials with friends. They always wanted to get movies with like Andrew McCarthy. And I'm like, no, let's watch Kathleen Madigan's comedy special. You know, whatever, you know, whoever, like Sue Murphy. That's who I used to watch. And, um, and Rosie O'Donnell. But um, yeah, I just wanted to, I just admired it. I just think it's such a cool art form. Like, and I just always when, wanted to do it. When did you start? How many years ago did you start doing comedy? April will be 27 years. Oh my. Okay. So, okay. So <laughs> do you remember the very first time you got on stage? Yes. How scary was that? Cause I thought about doing it. I'm not funny. I'm not funny though. So I, I, I for sure would get booed off stage. You know what? You wouldn't. Cause I think everybody can do stand up if they find their voice and they talk about things about themselves, which is what people forget to do in Self comedy. Self-deprecation. Well, that works too. But people think they got to go up and go, what's up with orange juice? Why is there <laughs> orange juice with some pulp? What's up with that? Like, no, no one gives a shit. They want to hear about you and like about your life and like who you are. And that's something that takes a while to figure out. But yeah. my first time, here's the thing. My first time I had a good set. The next 37 were horrible. So I was very, it was very deceiving that, sorry, I'm trying to hide from the camera. I'm like, she does not like the camera. I hate it. <laughs> this, this is why I'm a writer, kids. Um, so uh, anyway, but um, uh, yeah, the, so that's how. Uh, what I ask? About my first time on stage. It oh, actually yeah. went well. It actually went well. Okay. But then after that, I just bombed. And then. Um, uh, well, I had like a near, not near death experience, but like a very scary experience. And that, when I, when that happened, I realized I got to do this now. So I just started writing stuff about what happened to me yeah. and got up on stage and did it. Do you see things as a comedian? Do you think that you see things differently? Because maybe if something serious happens, you try to make a joke about it. Uh, is that something that goes through your mind whenever you see something to try to figure out a funny way to, to analyze it? Um, Kind of. I think uh, whenever something happens to me that I think other people would want to hear about, mm -hmm. I do try to find a way to craft it into a joke, you know, or even if it's a story, just a story that's full of punchlines. Because you can tell a funny story, but if it doesn't have a, a middle, you know, that breaks it up with laughs or an end, you got to have the end. Yeah. Punchlines the important part. You don't have that and it just trails off. The audience doesn't know when to laugh. They don't know when to laugh until you stop talking. Right. Oh, yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that, especially if yeah. you're coming on stage for the first time. There's so many things about being a comedian that people like me just wouldn't understand that. But you've crafted it. It took it takes a long time to kind of figure out and get comfortable. And even now, I'm still you never stop learning. You never stop working on it. And if you do, that's bad. Yeah. You know, like you should always keep working. There's never, I'm done. Like that doesn't happen. I'm Do, always building. When you say, when you're on stage, you're telling your stories. Yeah. Is there a lot of truth to them? Yes. Have you ever just made up a fake story on stage? Yes. <laughs> That's what you, you do. <laughs> fake stories. Absolutely. Story. I have. Um, yeah. I've made, I make up fake stuff, but like it's based on truth. I just sort of like embellish or exaggerate it, you know? Uh oh. Favorite what? Oh, oh yeah, your favorite bit. Your favorite. I got oh, something else to ask first. So we'll go. We'll go. Bit. We'll go into favorite bits. Why? Why you think about that? I want to ask you. Have you ever been nervous to perform with another comedian that maybe you thought could really steal the crowd? 
Like, is that something that happens? Like, nervous, like opening for someone or? You know what? My job at this point in comedy is to make the person after me look as good as possible. That's my job. And that's one thing new people have to realize. It's not all about you. They didn't pay to see you. They paid to see the name on the marquee. So you got to do your job and and do what the headliner wants. Fluff the crowd. You got to be the fluffer. Yeah. You and and hosting fluffer. is hard. You walk out that first three minutes, you got to be prepared for awkward silence. You've just got, no one walks out, does their first joke and it's like, Rah! like it's not. Okay. G- give me an example. Let's say this is a stage right here. Okay. Yeah. You're coming on stage. This is actually the biggest crowd I've ever performed for. So <laughs> okay, this is great. Okay. okay, you come on stage. Yeah. What's the first thing you say when you come on stage? It depends where I am. It depends what happened before me. It depends on what's going on. So it's never the same. Never. Do you ever do the same? So when you write comedy bits, mm-hmm. you write one, you perform it in one city. Let's say you travel to another city. You do the same exact comedy bit, right? Um, it, it, de- it depends. Everything uh, depends. It really does. Cause I'm a writer. So I'm always writing stuff and changing stuff. And a lot of comics stick to their set. Like a comic I just worked with, he did his set. And I remember working with him 20 years ago and I'm like, Oh my God, the first 10 minutes, it's exactly the same. I could never do that. I'd be so bored. Yeah. It's, it's like so doing the boring. same song over and over and over again that you've already done. Right. But the audience wants to hear that. But with comedy, it's different. You know, like mm. people will come up to me and go, you did that joke four years ago. I saw it. And I'm like, shut up. That we got to recycle. It's still funny. It's still funny. So like in my set right now, I have staples that I keep, you know, that sort of move me from one subject matter to the other. But, you know, my act 15 years ago, I can't even do any of those jokes right. anymore. None of them are who I am now. So I had to change everything. What's one? What is one of your favorite bits? Could you do one? Um, I'm trying to think of ones I can't do anymore. Which the, is, bo- the Boston sex guy? Look, it's Brandon Cook from Black and Blue. And the Loyal Order, <laughs> awesome bands. Um, I guess that's such a weird question. No one's ever asked me that before. Kelly, what's a good joke of mine? I, I don't even know. How about that? How about that one time you bought orange juice and it was pulp in it? There was some pulp. What's up with that? And I was like, what's going on here? I like my orange juice with no pulp. <laughs> orange juice with no pulp. I like too. it smooth, just going down smooth. Podcast. Yeah, I can't see my. What about the podcast? Huh? No, I don't I, know what you said. Back London punchline. Oh, my punchlines and backline show. There, okay, there you go. Yeah. What is that? It is. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing over here. No, you should. I'm do. just standing around here. What are you talking about? You're hosting a podcast. You're killing it. I'm doing Listen. okay. Thank you. Listen to me. You're doing great. All right. So, uh, punchlines and backlines is my show. I almost did this. That's you all right. Did. <laughs> you did great. Thank you. Amen. You. Amen. Um, it, it's a show where, uh, it's a rock theme show and we have rock stars come on and do comedy for the first time. And it, the audience knows it's their first time, you know, so they're a little more forgiving, you know, and it ends up being a lot of fun. Everybody's always super nervous at first, but they all always have a great set. Always. It's always great. It's always fun. We work with them for weeks before Don Jameson is, is like li- officially my partner now on okay. the show and, and he and I write together and, um, and we figure out the set based on a phone conversation we have with them or like a Zoom. And then we put it together. And then based on what we know about their music, because we anyone we ask, we're a fan of theirs. Mm-hmm. So we're writing it from the perspective of what their fan audience wants to hear. And, and, and you know, what would make them laugh? Like, what would a fan of Eric Martin who's doing our Is show hard Sunday? to do? You know what? In the beginning, a little bit. But it's so natural for me because I write for other people more than myself. Wow. So it feels very natural. And to find a voice and to craft that stuff, it's very satisfying. It feels really good. That'd be hard to do. I, I could Because like, you have to pinpoint an audience and yeah. then write for them. Write for that audience. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to do in the entertainment industry? Would it be stand-up or would it be writing? This shit. What, pot- this stuff. Coming to these conventions? Coming to this stuff. Doing, um, I'm doing my second Monsters of Rock cruise this year with Punchlines and Back. Cool, right on. With Don Jameson and Jim Florentine. And um, that's the stuff I love. That's what I've worked all these years for, is to be able to do things like this. Because this is like where my heart is. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like I have a booger in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel like I, I, feel like I, got I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> I guess that's it. Yeah, no, new stand-up 
on YouTube. The shit I got was old. Okay, it's so old. I mean, we were gonna play a bit, before, and she said, "Don't do that bit." Yeah, that was before I wore body shapers. Um, it's <laughs> uh, that joke is so old. But um, I have uh some stuff. I have a new thing I have on my Instagram about being in Key West, and then there's a couple jokes I have on the Kiss Cruise on YouTube. Cool. So, and I'm in like the big theater. It's really weird. It looks like I'm there alone because the pit's empty. It looks like no one's there. Do you typically come to music conventions? Um, I've performed at a, a few Kiss conventions. Okay, right on. Because I do a lot of material about Kiss. It's like I have my rock shows that I could never do in a comedy club. None of those jokes would translate. Not one. Well, because you're relating to the audience, though. Yeah. The, the people that are there. Yeah, that makes sense. and then in the club, I do like I'm married and my dog and my past and, and I go to juice. Vegas yeah. and orange and the orange yeah. juice thing, which kills. And um, I like it. Yeah, so it's just completely different sets. I think if you say a joke too many times, it winds up not being funny. I think I said orange juice three times. No, it's okay. It's called it's a callback. Okay. That was four Especially times. It's a callback. Is that what it's called? People love a callback. Really? Absolutely. See, I should be a comedian. Callback. What do you think? Should I do it? No. See, yes, you, I should be a comedian. If you need help right, with Sam? your set, no. <laughs> That's what I do for a can, living. Can you write for me? Yeah. See how much do you charge? Uh, not that, not crazy. No, I mean, hundred bucks. No, more. <laughs> <laughs> I charge more, but it's because I have a lot of clients right now. But I charge more, but it's worth it. And then you get your set, and then you've got your five minutes, and then you build from there, and then but you go you'd off have on your to own. write for me. We write together when not, you're a new comic. Oh, oh, so you would help me out and figure out how I deliver my punchline. We craft it, tighten it up, get it strong, figure out where the funny goes. I think I'm going to do that. You should. He has no funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's cut to your clip that she's sending me. That we're going to put on. We're like all, it's like always, you know, and like, um, but uh, we've been married 12 years. My husband um, is German, like f from Germany, German, like Guten Tag, like from the, yeah, from the Black Forest. That's a real place where the ham and the cake comes from. Um, it's real. It's beautiful. Um, but we met in Vegas. We met in Vegas playing poker, <laughs> which I think is kind of romantic. Sometimes what happens in Vegas, get somebody a green card. So that's nice. Like he can, <laughs> he can stay. Um, yeah, I love Vegas. Does anybody love Vegas? You like to go? You do? You do one of these? Are you a gambler? Oh, but you just like to go there. Okay. See, that's like my husband. We love Vegas, but I love to gamble and he does not. Okay, so everyone's always like, well, what do you guys do when you go there? I'm like, um, hello, it's Vegas. We fight. <laughs> In public. Now that I've lost everything to you, so you want to start something new And it's breaking my heart You're leaving Baby, I'm grieving But if you want to leave Take good care Hope you have a lot of nice things to wear But then a lot of nice things turn bad out there
right, everybody, we are still in National Rockin' Pod 2023, hanging out with Mr. Big Eric Martin, who Eric Martin, says yeah. I am louder Ooh. than him, and I talk more than he does. There you go. You, after all these years of playing music, do you still find it just as fun to get on stage as you first did when you first started playing? Hells to the yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, when I was young and, you know, dumb and full of you know, all that um, good. Yeah. All right. Look at you. You're so proud of yourself that you get to say the word. Come. Say come. <laughs> all right. Come all ye faithful. When come I was younger, when I was younger, I had, I had that dream, man. I, I wanted to carry that torch of all the rockers that I loved. And, uh, I, I do, I love what I do. Everything's, I still get nervous. I get those butterflies when I come up. The, the, the main thing is like when I come up that back stairs and, and, you know, in a um, arena, the lights kind of turn off like this, click, 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 and they turn off. Yeah. Oh my God, that's my stomach just turning over and over again. It doesn't matter if you're, to me, everybody looks at me like, oh, dude, you're a professional. You don't do that. No, man, I get that butterflies coming out. Still got to practice big time. Uh, like I remember one time I was playing the forum years and years ago mm -hmm. in LA, and I forgot the words to Addict to That Rush. And the crowd, like 15,000 people are going, they knew the words more than I did, but no, no, I still love what I do, and I uh, I still get the spark of it big time. Yeah. After playing as long as you have, are there? Do you still have the same set list, or do you change it up from time to time? Well, well, well of course, with Mr. Big. I mean, every. Oh, well, oh, I see what you're saying. So the first album with the, or my kids call it the Hat and Shoes album. <laughs> There's no name for it. Yeah, we played every one of those songs because that's all we had. And lean into it. We did a lot of, you know, the Daddy Brother and Alive and Kick and all that. And then we'll add a lot of all the bands do it. You know, they they gather from the first album, and then we did it so on and so on. I used to freak out a little bit that like we have to play the same songs all the time, but we were super tight. Once in a while, we'd add something. But the cool thing that we did over the years what was because everybody was a multi uh, instrumentalist, we could. Uh, we switched. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pat would um, sing. Uh -huh. I mean, we switched it up. I, I got to play drums a couple times, but Pat would be the lead singer. Billy would play guitar. I play bass, and and Paul would play drums. And we play, we did like Suffragette City. Uh, you know, have you heard the news? There's good rocking tonight. We do that. We did. I remember recently, maybe five six years ago, we did uh, Joy to the World by Three Dog cool. Night. Yeah, yeah just to, right. just to kind of free it up and have fun but we didn't vary from the set we picked a set we practiced a set first of all 24 songs in the set and you're asking me do you you know no we played everything no fan would come up to me and go you didn't play my right. favorite song we played everything is that, is that, has that ever happened to you where a fan comes up to you after the show and saying how can you play this song all the time but you have a certain set limit like a time limit right yeah yeah but but I have a tear jar. <laughs> Here you go. No, uh, a lot of fans, you know, they want to hear a certain song that yeah. maybe a rare track that we would we didn't never did. We we did um, like on this. So Mr. Big is touring for the last time, and we're doing all of Asia in in July and the January, February, and March. We're going to play the USA, Europe, and South America, okay. right on. and we're going to play the Lean Into It album in its entirety. And then add a bunch of songs. And since it's the end, mm -hmm. or we call it the big finish, okay, uh, there'll be no stone left unturned. I mean, there'll be everything. No one will come up and say, you didn't play my favorite song. Or I've had, hey, check this out. I've had people come up and, and you know you're going to hear it to be with you. But I've heard, I've had like drunk ass people come up to me and go, you didn't play to be with you. And I go, <laughs> Oh no, it was there on the set. I hold up the set list. It was the 24th song. You didn't play Wild World. Oh no, but it was there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite? I don't know if you have a favorite memory of a tour that you've done previously that you just sticks out that you've really enjoyed. Well, when I play the Budokan Arena uh -huh. in Japan, it's got so much history to it. I'm Cheat Trick, the Beatles. I mean, when you come up that back stairs, like I said, when the lights go off, I mean, the Beatles played here, and I've done it six times, maybe six, seven times. And uh, one of the biggest gigs I've ever did, it was 100,000 people. Uh -huh. Mr. Big, uh, Henry Rollins, mm -hmm. Black Flag. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, it was a, an eclectic kind of group. Yeah, no Lemonheads, I think, played it. It was a okay. while ago. 
was an, on a uh, Santos Beach in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Their musicians or singers had a huge catwalk, and you know, walk into the cat walk past everybody in the catwalk, and hundreds and thousands of people on the beach, and everybody naked. It's hot, hotter than shit outside. Right. But there's a delay when you go way out there. And I, I was going like this. On the big screen, it's going, hey, look at me, like an idiot, right? <laughs> and then when I was singing, I dig that rush, the band was like, come back. You're out, you're out of time. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, I've had a lot of mishaps, but a lot of um, great, great shows. All, all of them are great, but the Budokan Arena is, is pretty amazing. Let's talk a little about your maybe going into stand up or doing stand up, anyways. Yeah, right. yeah, I'm gonna try to be funny. I'm funny when I do my stage stuff, and I've got an acoustic guitar, or I'm playing with a band. Mm -hmm. It's it's improv. It's a lot of um, ball busting. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. I heard you last night talk a lot about balls and. and, and balls, you know, I, I, talk shit to first of all, Don Jameson uh, over there talking. Uh, he goes, "Yeah, you like balls a lot." And I'm like, "Oh, stop doing it's that." Funny. It is funny. It, it, Balls are kind of funny. Yeah, and you say it over and over again. But uh, tomorrow would be more of like, a, it's a script. I'm super nervous about it. And it's only 10 minutes. Do you and practice I practice it? Uh, like uh, over and over again? Like I, I know the stories. because I. So we, we did a little production meeting with me and Don and Courtney, uh, one of the other comedians. And we're all hanging out. And, and I'm telling them stories and trying to get a comedy thing. And she wrote this whole thing for me to do it, right? I can barely remember the lyrics to, to be with you and I got to I got to read these the script. So I so it is a script and it's my story but there's a little couple little jokes here and there but I I I'll, I'm going to tell uh three stories about like rock guys that I met or pissed off or okay. you know that thing yeah. Um I you know I've run into a lot of uh great rock stars but a lot of funny shit has happened to me with them. And, and that, that'll be the nucleus. Nucleus? Is that a word? Uh, you don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, is Sam, is nucleus a word? Uh, sure. Oh, <laughs> damn. Word. That's where he gets the big bucks. <laughs> yeah. that, babe. So, uh, and I will, um, you know, if I, if I forget some of the script, I'll go over and tell more of these stories. Right. So, right but, it, but just like it's, but it's uh, the, this, I'm Mr. Stories. Big Mouth right now, and yeah. it's only going to be 10 minutes, and I'm nervous. But they'll probably, you know, get that hook and bring me off stage, kind of thing. Come you on, know? man. That would that would be nervous. It's it's not, it's almost like not really a career change, I guess. Huh? Just something that you, as a hobby, maybe you want to do for fun. Everybody always says to me, "You're funny," and even like, I got to tell you, if, if I have time for a, a quick story, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I'm in Japan, and I'm doing an acoustic show, uh, like five acoustic shows, and I had me and this guy John Matt Namira. Uh, playing acoustic guitar from Australia. Right. And then I brought Pat Torpy with me to play cajon and sing. And I'm talking to the Japanese audience, and, and they speak a little English, obviously, over the years, and they know all the lyrics of the songs. And I'm be, I'm doing my shtick, and I come backstage, and Pat goes, and like, hey, Mr. Big, you know, they was like, nobody, they didn't let me talk. They were like, get right to this. We're serious musicians. Like, Let's get right into it. Granted, They'll probably be saying, you're a liar, Eric. you got to talk a little bit. But not really. There'd be some band meetings like, mm, you might want to zip that <laughs> lip up a little. So uh, here we are in Japan, and I come backstage, and Pat goes, you're funny. You're an entertainer. Oh, my God, you're so funny, and the crowd loves you. How come you don't do that on Mr. Big? <clears throat> Who told you that you can't be funny like that? And yeah. I go, you. <laughs> you're the man. <laughs> and he goes, oh, I should be shot. I can't believe I did that. And I go, yeah, you're the one who told me. And then everybody else had that band meeting and they said, you might have, you know, they never said shut up and sing ever, but, but they would go, I'm sure, yeah, yeah. Here, like, hold this. I'm sure Billy would go like this and go, you want to move it along here? We got some rock to do here. You know, yeah, I can kind of spin a yarn. So sorry. No, that's great. You're just like me, man. I can, I can talk. No, no I can one's talk like, no one's like you loud mouth. <laughs> I mean, right there, the loud mouth, the loud spot. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, your hair. So you cut it yeah. off how long ago? I, uh, I cut it off. My second wife thought it would be like hipper if I just cut it off and, you know, like, you know be, be new and everything like that. And, yeah. I, and I've had that thing for a really long time. It was, was getting, When I was in high school, I had really long hair. Mm -hmm. 
and it would just kind of turn curly and everything. It was really cool. And then we cut it off. And when you cut your hair and you try to grow it back, it don't look good anymore, man. It's not the same. No, it's Brillo. I don't it's have a, any hair. All right, all right. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm trying to grow this back out. It's just not working. But I've had this same hairstyle look for 20-something years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's got to be about 20 years. And, uh, yeah, it just didn't It didn't look good. How come you don't grow, grow your hair? Blah, blah, blah. So I have this little blue shoe box at home, and I was going through it. It had a bunch of lyrics in it. And a, and a little Ziploc bag of my, my hair oh, in right it. On. Yeah, because I, I go, I'm going to keep my hair. Yeah. Oh, I don't look good now. You can probably sell it. On yeah, yeah, no. No, no. It's, yeah, it's so funny, too, because it's like this much hair, and you're sticking a little Ziploc bag over time in 20 years. I'm like, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> that big? Yeah. Well, good luck on your tour, your upcoming tour. Right on, and thanks. And good luck on your comedy thing that you're doing tomorrow night. Oh, man, I am as in, like I got an October fest going home. here, man, and oh god, I'm sweating maybe like a like pig. Drink, you know? If I might be easier, like a couple like, shots, maybe a couple beers, and do doing that thing. Maybe I could get over. It. But like, I really respect comedians or guys like you talking, of, just talking without not being. In, I mean, this is what you do. When I this is what you do. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm hanging with my band, I I feel comfortable. I can and if. If the audience doesn't laugh, I can just take the piss out of my band. I would never do that with Mr. Big. Just put that out there. <laughs> but some of the guys in my band, they can take it. They, they, thick skin, you know? But but doing a... I mean, I, I mean, it's I, hard, I, man. I get, it's I, hard I get to do this almost every single stuff. Show, I get nervous. And sometimes I don't know what I'm going to say, what I'm going to ask, or how they're, they're going to like So how come you looked at me when I, I go, yeah, I still get butterflies when I go up on stage, and you're like, Looking at me like, kind of stepping back, like, you kind of gave me that look. Dude, now come out. No, Be I, real, bro. I, I get nervous sometimes doing, doing <laughs> podcasts. If it's like someone that's like a known, some band that's not big or anything like that, or like an actor that's not real big, I don't get nervous. I just say whatever the fuck I want. Right. When it's someone kind of big, though, you don't know. Sometimes you don't know if they're going to be receptive of what you ask. Or maybe I've asked some questions that everyone else asks them and they're tired of answering. Oh, I know. If you, if you no. get a little of that. <laughs> One time I met Eric Clapton, he was a really, really nice guy, but I could tell while I was talking to him, he was going, <laughs> Yeah. Probably like, I'm like, Oh, you got to go. And he goes, No, 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 it's cool. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's that good. You that's ever that still, good. Last question Do you ever get starstruck by anyone? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. And, you know, and it's the weirdest thing. I mean, I've met so many people Stephen Tyler, Coverdale, um, Michael Schenker, like great rock and roll people, but Dave Matichetti, even though we really are tight, I know that guy. I love YNT. I love him. But when I get around Dave Matichetti, because he's like a hometown hero, mm -hmm. Bay Area guy, and he's going to laugh when he hears this, if he watches this show, you know, I get like, uh, remember when, you know, I get like Chris Farley kind of moment. Yeah. Jesus. It's weird. I you're, from the Bay, you're from the Bay Area. Literally. I am. Yeah. I'm from San Francisco. Yeah, yeah I, born, I, born in there and raised in the Bay Area. I, I live in Marin County. I live in San Rafael. Oh, not, oh! I heard you last night talking about Santa Rosa. Well, no, Paul Taylor lived in Santa Rosa, so you know that, that that's where I went, right? But I, I lived in San Francisco for years. My dad was in the Army, stationed at the Presidio. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Where, where did you grow up? I grew up in a town called Vacaville, but my, uh, my I had a little town was, called Vacaville. Hey, sweaty hot there. I I, <laughs> yeah, I, I went to Galileo yeah. High School in San Francisco, yeah. actually. Okay. So I, I live in Nevada now. Okay, right on. Yeah. I love Northern California. Hey, let me tell you exactly where I live. <laughs> Give us your address. <laughs> Eric, man, oh, thank man. you so much for stopping by. Thank you. This is the Loud Spot outro by Nothing Short of Tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have us back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over.